thank you. Very excited to be here today for my first Big Data Day LA. Um, great. Uh, so in my talk today, I'm going to share with you two of my favorite things that our team at Kaggle has learned about what data scientists need to successfully collaborate together on data projects. These two things have shaped how our community has grown to become the world's largest online community of data scientists over the past eight years. So first, for those who aren't familiar with Kaggle, I want to give you a quick tour of our platform. Today, over two million data scientists come to the platform to do data science projects. They do this by participating in machine learning competitions uh, and by publishing and exploring data uh, that's shared on our data sets platform. For both competitions and for our data sets platform, users can analyze the data in R or Python and share their work with our hosted notebooks environment that's called Kaggle Kernels. So all of these competitions and the submissions that our users have made, the open source code that they share with the world in kernels, and the public data sets add up, have added up to insights into how data scientists work together to solve problems. And these are some of the insights that I want to share with you today. So the first lesson uh, that I want to share is about the huge impact that access to socially validated knowledge has on uh, data scientists' ability to successfully collaborate on data projects. So when we launched Kaggle over eight years ago, we learned early on that the community is highly motivated uh, to share knowledge, but sometimes discovering and build up, building upon it was extremely difficult. So when each competition ends on Kaggle, our users share winning and innovative solutions. They share these insights on our forums. They've published over 200 How I Did It interviews on our blog. And often they even publish papers exploring novel approaches, for example, using WaveNet for sales forecasting, or some of the earliest work uh, done on diagnosing diabetic retinopathy using recurrent neural networks. So now whenever a new competition launches, there's this tradition where users immediately go to scour our website and the internet at large to assemble these bits of knowledge uh, that they can then use to kickstart their work on a new challenge. So to contrast this um, huge array of knowledge that has to be compiled from all over the web, I want to uh, tell a story where uh, uh, centralizing this knowledge on Kaggle and adding a social feedback loop had a huge impact. And this is the story of the development of XGBoost, a gradient boosting library. In its early day days, the author, Tianqi Chen, seeded discussion about his new package on forums, on our competition forums, and he gave users clear instructions for how to install this new package he was developing. Because he shared on the forums with users who are in, in the midst of working on solving problems, uh, he was able to respond to feedback and reports of unexpected behavior and crashes. And even when each competition ended, he would solicit feedback via surveys for, uh, to be able to uh, use as input into developing uh, XGBoost. Now, several years later, and XGBoost is one of the winningest algorithms for doing machine learning on structured data. And this is thanks in huge part to the close feedback loop with users in the community where knowledge was able to accumulate and improve in quality. So I want to return then to the example of the flood of knowledge that's generated with each competition. Today we provide more tools that enable users to discover related content on Kaggle to the problems that they're trying to solve. In an example of this, one of our users leveraged our public data set about Kaggle, aptly named MetaKaggle, to create a master list of all these winning solutions that were before spread across all kinds of forums. And he organized it by problem statement and characteristics using tags, for example, multi-class classification. So now whenever a competition launches on multi-class classifications, they can reference this list and see what work has done previously. In a similar example, this user used the same data set 
and he used tags and other metrics of popularity and usage to create a data science glossary of all the top open source code that was shared in kernels that's organized by techniques. And this is, again, a, a really huge, uh, exciting resource to our community. So then what's the lesson that we've learned from examples like this in our community? We at Kaggle strongly believe that no one beginning a data science project should begin from a, a blinking cursor. This is especially critical for new data scientists. Whether that means somebody who's completely new to the field and has never used random forest algorithm, uh, or whether uh, it's somebody who's new to a team and just beginning to explore a new space. It can even apply when new business or research questions are being asked. Using centrally located and searchable knowledge that's organized by relevance to the current problem at hand, data scientists should be able to start writing code faster and answer questions faster. We've also learned from these examples that knowledge that's been socially validated in our community, such as the XGBoost example where there was this close feedback loop, or th through the availability of popularity metrics, is critical to identifying and then iterating and improving on good ideas. So then the second insight that I wanna share with you uh, that we've learned from our community uh, about collaborative data science is the importance of making your work reproducible. And this is not just for uh, those that you're collaborating with, but also your future self. So to illustrate this, I'm gonna return to a competition from five years ago. And in this forum post, this user, with all of the best intentions, wants to get more people involved in solving the challenge at hand. However, in his forum post, we're observing many of the stumbling blocks that data scientists encountered at the time when they were trying to share their work. So first, he's sharing his code in a paste bin. We'd also very commonly see that users would attach R or Python code to their forums and this requires other users who want to collaborate and contribute to download that code and figure out how to run it locally. It's the equivalent of passing code uh, via email attachments. Second, he lists out his assumptions about the shape of the data. He has to do this because he's not sharing the data itself. Finally, and for me, this is the real kicker, he adds an update at the end of his post. Someone else, in a brave attempt to collaborate, has identified a bug in his code. So he's gone ahead and adjusted his code in the paste bin, which is of course the right thing to do, but it leaves anybody who previously down downloaded that code in the dark. So all of these things, which we commonly saw in Kaggle's community forums in the early days, mean that code, ideas, and results were extremely difficult to reproduce. And this was a huge obstacle to collaboration, even when the clear, uh, the, 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 the will is clearly here. And for many of us in, in our day jobs, this is a necessity. So in response, to this, uh, in response to this observation about our users attempting to collaboration and the problems that they were facing, we launched Kernels. This is our free hosted computational environment for notebooks and scripts. So to illustrate the impact of kernels, I'm showing here one of Francois Cholet's uh, tutorial kernels that demonstrates how to use his then new library, Keras. Uh, and he, sh he shares all of the code uh, to achieve a really respectable score on a competition predicting whilst Nile virus. This made a massive difference because kernels are versioned packages of code, data, and environment. This means that over 60 users, just for this example alone, were able to fork his code and make and execute from their own copy. And they could do so with a simple click of a button. So this is in huge contrast to the example before. It also made a huge difference in the trajectory of the popularity of Keras on Kaggle. So as recent as June, over 1,500 Python kernels import Keras on Kaggle. Finally, we know it's not just about the tools and the infrastructure. We've also observed and we learned from talking to Kaggles, Kagglers through interviews that they adopt some best practices that I also wanna share um, for their data projects that tend to fall into two categories. First, templatization is a best practice for things like using a common directory structure across projects, uh, modularizing your code and data, 
and especially when collaborating with a team, creating and sharing libraries of that commonly used those commonly used code snippets from project to project. And then the other category is documentation. In addition to documenting code, our users document their, their data on Kaggle. And top Kagglers that we've interviewed also commonly report keeping close logs uh, that include steps to reproduce the results of their work to, um, and this is especially the case if they don't use kernels. And finally, uh, one smart thing that they do is they also use these lab style notes to keep track of ideas that they experiment with, hypotheses that they test, and the results that they obtain. Uh, and this is while they're iterating through a data project. And this means that ideas and null results aren't relegated to a file drawer where they collect dust, but they can be learned from and built upon. So what's our lesson from these examples? More people will be able to interrogate, use, and extend good ideas in data science if those ideas are easy to reproduce. Reproducible data science projects package together versioned code, data, and environment. They also use best practices like templatization and documentation. So to conclude, we've learned that the two things that enable data scientists to be successful when they collaborate is access to socially validated knowledge and the ability to reproduce their and other, others' work. These insights and others, many others, have informed how we've developed our datasets and kernels products that allow our users today to collaborate on data projects beyond just competitions. So if you found any of this interesting and you'd like to discover and share more ins insights about how data scientists collaborate, I encourage you to check out the Meta Kaggle data set that I mentioned that contains all of our public data about Kaggle and Kaggle users. Uh, there's a lot of kernels that you can fork to get your project started. Thank you. <laughs>